Welcome to the Red Sox Alley Show and your BostonSports.com. I'm Rob Goodwin along with my co-host Flanagan. How are you? How's it going? It's been a while since you've been in the studio. It has, and you know what? The studio looks great. Oh, it continued improvement. We put a little work into it. We added some lighting and we added some new mics, uh, hands-free. Wow. Uh, big thank you uh, to our technical specialist and uh, and uh, the guy that, that we rely on to uh, steer us in the right direction as far as the studio is concerned, Steve Dresner. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's been a long winter, but how's it been for you so far? It's been, you know, very long, very busy. Um, happy to be back here on the mm -hmm. show. Yeah. We're missing Corn today. Well, Corn and I did a show, as you know, um, a couple weeks ago. We didn't do video, though. Oh. Now, they say he has a face for radio. He does. But the truth is, we did uh, start off doing video, but we had some technical difficulties, which have since been ironed out, at least we think so. So that show was audio only. So th th this show, obviously, is video. Uh, it's on YouTube, and uh, we hope to get a lot of uh, folks watching it and listening to it as well, which will just be its traditional audio-only podcast. So, you know, we're trying to break some new ground and, um, you know, still stay to our core values of a quality show for th the family and all ages. Well... Quality, I don't know. Well, we could we could try. We'll try. We'll try. So the Sox are they have uh, spring training in full swing. They lost to the Pirates yesterday. I don't think we're kind of concerned about wins and losses. Right. Um, nothing really major going on. I mean, Jake Peavy cut his hand. Okay, it's not a strong hand, so I guess he's on the mend. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, coming off a World Series year, there are some question marks. Obviously, you know, with with Ellsbury leaving. Uh, Corn and I talked about Jackie Bradley Jr. and everyone jumped on the bandwagon last year, and you know he didn't really last, um, you know, into May, mm -hmm. which from a career standpoint is okay. He's a young guy, but what, what right. do you think of of them thrusting him into the situation of center field along with Grady Sizemore? Yeah, no, I think it is his job to lose, um, and I think you know there's probably going to be some growing pains there, but the kid can play, and I think they should give him a shot. I think there's enough of a veteran presence behind him uh, to cover, um, you know, so you've, like you said, you have Sizemore who, mm -hmm. who might not be able to play all the time um, due to injuries and stuff. Uh, you know, you have Gomes that can cover different spots and Nava. There's a nice rotation out there in outfield. Um, yeah, so that I think they need to let him kind of see what he can do. Now, they're obviously taking the pressure off of him and, off of him and not – hitting leadoff at all. They're not even talking about it. And, and the word is that his, his best speed is in the outfield, so they're trying to work with him on base stealing because he doesn't have blazing speed on the bases, apparently. But I think the hope is, you know, they'll bat him low in the order and hope that that takes the pressure off and he gets off to a decent start. And I think regardless, you know, they'll probably stick with him and, and they're going to give, obviously, Sizemore some time as well, depending on how he comes along. It sounds so far, like so far he's coming along pretty well. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think... Obviously, losing Ellsbury speed on the bases was one of the things that we lost, uh, you know, other than him being a really good uh, center fielder. Um, in a combination with Vitorino there and Pedroia can steal some bases as well, you can bring uh, Jackie Bradley uh, Jr. along a little bit in that respect. You know, that's how you scratch off some runs and you get an extra run a game that adds up a lot. Right. Now, what are your thoughts on, on the catcher position? They brought in Pierzynski, Ross is there. Um, aside from the young kids that you have, um, you know, Pawtucket and uh, hopefully I think at Portland, uh, you've got a couple of catchers that are kind of up in age right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Although Przinsky seemed to have caught a lot of games last year. Any concerns in that area? It's funny with Przinsky because I was never a huge fan of him. And it's not because of the way he plays, because he plays really hard. Um, it's more of, you know, he was an antagonist. Right, right. Uh, so he'll probably do some of that. Uh, which now being on our side is actually a good thing. Um, and I think Ross brings a veteran presence. I think between the two, they'll be a pretty nice um, bridge to the wealth of catches we have in the, the uh, farm system. A couple really good ones that we'll talk about mm -hmm. uh, later on. Um, but I'll tell you, you know, there's, it's a bridge. It's a one-year bridge. It's a two-year bridge maybe. Um, but I think the future is, is not that far away. And don't forget, Ross did not, have, did not have a full season last year with the concussions that he, that he suffered. So I think, you know, him having a full season, he'll obviously be able to catch more games than he did. And, and that, that put a lot of, I don't say pressure, I think more opportunity with Salto and mm -hmm. last year because he caught an awful lot of games when Ross was out. Mm -hmm. But I think the fact is that 
you know, they'll split it up, obviously. And I don't know how many games you think Krasinski will catch, maybe 110, or something like that. Ross, 50, 50, whatever. Yeah, and it might even be a closer split than that. Um, you know, I don't know. I haven't looked into it deep enough to see which one is better defensively or offensively. Uh, Krasinski, I think, might, you know, kind of win out those two battles. I, I think he'd win out the offensive battle. Defensive, I'm not so sure. Right? Mm-hmm. I think, I mean, Ross is solid behind the plate. Yeah. He handles pitchers well. So I don't think, um, a defensively, I think it would be Ross, but probably not by much. Yeah. Probably not by and much. I, and, I, and again, I think Ross bring, they both do, bring a presence to the clubhouse. As we saw last year with a pennant run, um, Ross is a pretty stabilizing uh, influence in the clubhouse. And you can just hear him on interviews. He's, you know, consummate team player. Mm-hmm. So. Well, you know, and my, my thought is that that I'm not trying to make this happen, but I think the catching situation as you go into the season, you may see the future more quickly than you think because one of these guys, Przinsky or Ross, could get injured. Something could happen. Like I said, they are up in age, and you may see one of the younger catchers yep. uh, get called up pretty quickly. You have uh, Swihart at AAA, right? Right. And then you have Christian Vasquez. Um, I believe he's going to be a double A this year. So I'm not trying to make things happen, but the fact is that, you know, when you saw what happened with uh, with Ross last year, it's not so unusual for a catcher to get hurt, and they mm-hmm. do get beat up, you know, as the season goes. So I, I don't think that's a bad thing as far as seeing the future because you know, you've got these kids down there in the minors that, you know, are top prospects. And the fact is that that happens all the time. Yeah. You know, Middlebrooks, it happened with Middlebrooks in 2012. Sure. You know, last year you had a couple of guys, Snyder played play a lot of third base. Um, so you, you never know. And I don't think it's something the Red Sox need to be concerned about or worried about. They're just going to let it happen. Yeah, absolutely. Again, I think they felt comfortable in uh, letting uh, Salty go. Obviously, you know, thanks for, thanks for everything because he certainly was a key part in bringing, um, in bringing the World Series last year. But that was largely a financial decision. <clears throat> Yeah, and I think they had, I think they feel like they have enough in the farm system and then the bridge to the farm system mm-hmm. to to really, you know, bring some of these guys up. These and they guys did, are young. Right, and they didn't want to pay him the $14.1 million, Right. You know. And that's uh, that's course, a lot. It is a lot. Is. I mean, you know, it's, it's quite, that's quite an increase for Sato Lamacchia. He wasn't even making eight. I think he was maybe making six or yeah. so, you know. Yeah. So if you look at the top 20 prospects, I mean, the, the first two are, are um, obvious. Right. It was Xander Bogart to Jackie Bradley Jr. Alan Webster, number three. Now, he did not look very good at all last year. His last seven appearances were horrendous. And if you're going to grade a pitcher on his mound presence and how confident he looks, I think you give Webster an F. I don't know if it's because he didn't grow up in the Red Sox system you know, he was in the Dodgers system or yeah. what, but I don't know what, what your thoughts are as far as, you know, you know, the appearances he had last year, can he turn it around? Is he that yeah. highly, is, that, could he, is, is there a reason he's that highly regarded? I mean, he must have good stuff. Yes, he's very highly regarded. Um, I'm not so sure you'll see him on the team to start off the season. Uh, I think we'll have to see how that all plays out. I, I, I could see them giving him a shot again later on in the year. As needed, uh, right? As needed, as needed, correct. And maybe when rosters expand. Uh, but I'm not so sure he's going to figure a whole big deal in, in this year's team. Right. And, and then if he doesn't, then I'm not so sure he's going to be around for too long. Well, and don't forget, this is a very tough bullpen to crack, which is a very unusual thing to say about really any team. Yeah. But this is a very tough bullpen to crack. I mean, you can always have injuries, but there's, there's quite a line up there in the bullpen. Right? Absolutely. I mean, if you look at this, you got Breslow, Capuano, and he, Capuano could very well be a starter. Uh, De uh, La Rosa is a possibility. Miller. Workman, Tazawa. Workman, Tazawa, Mujica, 37 saves with St. Louis last year. Yeah. Um, there's Andrew Miller, uh, Miller, right. uh, Koji Uehara, although I think... The smartest thing would be for them to take it easy with him because he is going to be 39. Um, but, you know, the fact is that they've got a very deep bullpen. And even the guys that, you know, you, the young guys you look on this list that aren't, you know, shoe-ins to make the bullpen. Um, you've got Renato. Uh, I don't see um, 
I don't see Barnes on this list, but I guess um, he's not on the 40-man roster. He's not, no. But he could be. You know, so you've he got a lot. very well be. I mean, he's pretty highly rated. Pro- he, actually, he's right out of here in yeah. Connecticut. Yeah, right? UConn. So. Yeah. Drake Britton is another one. I mean, mm-hmm. who knows? Right. So, I mean, there are a lot of maybe. There are a lot of definites, a lot of maybes on the, in this bullpen. And I think a lot of major league teams would, would, would really love to have, you know, the kind of um, bullpen roster that you see here. And as Corn would say, it's a very luxurious problem to have. Right. Plain and simple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, even their, you know, starting rotation... As you said, any one of those guys could go down, and we've seen in the past few years that it's likely. Mm-hmm. Uh, Capuano could be a possibility there. But I think, again, you, you have a couple other guys that could step up out of the bullpen, and maybe you get some backfill from the minor leagues to fill some of that bullpen. And they are, stretching out, they are stretching out Workman to be a starter right now. Yeah. Dubron, I mean, we one appearance against hitters that aren't quite ready. I mean, he looked great the other day, two innings. Um, Morales is out of the mix as he was traded. No, I don't see no big deal, but yeah, you know, I, I, I don't think I was anybody any sweating concern, that. Uh, any concern with Breslow? I know, to me, in you know, against St. Louis, and obviously we can't, we're nitpicking a little bit here, right? Uh, Breslow seemed like he was done for the year. His his arm was done. His mind, I don't know where it was. Any concerns there for this year? Or, I think. We just overused him a little bit last year. And, uh, and I think it could have, been o- could have been overused. I mean, like, he's a veteran that's been around. Um, so I don't really think there's any concerns. I think there's a place for, for, for a good left-hander in the bullpen, and he's not going to have a great game every time out, nor is anyone, really. Right. Uh, you know, what's interesting is, um, I'm going to digress a little bit. Um, I don't know if, if you look at Xfinity on Comcast, but they have a Red Sox On Demand channel. Oh, I didn't know that. So um, usually... I figured there's nothing new there, but I hit the uh, My Fenway category, and they had a panel discussion from the Hot Stove Cool Music event, which took place in the in the, uh, in the winter time, uh, which is you know that's Theo Epstein's uh, um, foundation to be named later charity, and uh, the panel was uh, I'm going to miss some of them, but it was uh, Peter Gammons hosting it, Breslow, uh, John Farrell, Ben Sherrington, Michael Holly. Bob Ryan, um, and two of uh, Mike Hazen, one of the assistant GMs, and one other of uh, Ben Sherrington's assistant GM. And uh, it it was really interesting. Um, Breslow was asked a question. And the question was, you know, he, well, first of all, he's the only player to have been released by both Ben Sherrington and Billy Bean as general managers. And, um, but, you know, he, coming back to Boston, the question was, you know, he's had a fairly long career, but one interesting thing about his career is that once he hit the major leagues, he got better. And a lot of pitchers, you know, once they've pitched for a couple of years, that you are what you are, right? you know, and and he really couldn't explain why that happened, but, you know, he was fortunate to get a number of opportunities. And um, so do I think he's going to get better? I don't know, but I think he's got a really good handle on, on, on his job and mm-hmm. what it takes to be successful. And he's left-handed. Right. So that lengthens someone's career automatically. Right. I mean, you know, Tony Fossil was pitching at age 42, you know, for the Red Sox. Um, so, you know, that's kind of an inter- interesting thing. You see, he could, really couldn't explain it, you know. Yeah, but, you I, know, I, being I a like right, him. I like what he did for us. I do us. too. It's, you know, so hopefully being, he's just tired. Yeah, I mean, if you were a right-hander, um, would his career have, have gone this far, or would he have had the number of chances? Maybe not. Right. You know, maybe not. So that, that was an interesting part of that panel. I, I really encourage everyone, if you have uh, Xfinity On Demand, check out the Red Sox On Demand channel. Under my Fenway, you'll see the, the uh, Hot Stove Cool Music Foundation panel discussion. It was about an hour and 20 minutes. It, it was very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. So let me throw this out. Throw it is out. This, this is the first year maybe that we're not talking about it. And maybe this is the year that we have to, at some point, talk about it. Big Poppy. I mean, he's getting up there. He is. But every time we say it, he comes out with a 25 home run season and 100 RBI. When is he never? When is he not? So, you know, a lot of times with these hitters, they fall off the cliff real quick and then that's it. Is that going to happen or we still have another year here? I don't see why they can't just go... One year at a time. I know he wants an extension. I would I know give he's him signed two. for this year. I, I would give him two. 
Why not? I, I, you know, it's, you're not going to get two. I don't think. Well, you know, he he went into he went into last year saying, last year, and this year, and that's it. And now he wants to continue playing, which surprises me. But the reality is, as you point out, well, yes, you got to pay up, but but you know, he hasn't gotten worse. He's gotten better. I mean, you know, compared to... He actually to, played first base pretty well. Yeah, right? he always does. He always does against National League. <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, you know, three. if you look at him now compared to four years ago, he is better. He His left-hander is much better. I think that was the Adrian Gonzalez effect on him. I think yeah. that there, there was a lot of discussion between the two of them. And the reality is that has made him invaluable. I mean, more invaluable than he was before. And you he know? beats the shift more often than you would yeah, think, does. right? Yeah, he does. Um, yeah, I'm throwing it out there just to kind of stir the pot a little bit. I, I think they should give him a two-year contract, no, knowing that he might not fill, fulfill the whole thing. Um, I think you still have this year, you know, to do pretty well mm -hmm. with him. Right. And I think he wants to retire Red Sox, so I think you, you give him the two-year. And some of it is, hey, thank you for what you've done so far, and right. some of it is for the current production. What, a, what about the part where every time... He opens his mouth. It's about his contract. He wants an extension. I'll go somewhere else. It's a business. He's Does that playing. turn you off at all? I don't know. No, there's nothing really that turns you off about Big Poppy. It's Big See, Poppy. He, this now, is like all like every, city, but you Big know, like, Poppy. Like everyone says, you love him, but he gets a pass like no one else sure. in the game. Like no one else in the game. Even well, the FCC. Even, he won? The, even the FCC gives him a pass when he swore <laughs> about as about well Boston Strong. It was emotion. <laughs> I think he should get a pass pretty much for everything. For everything. You know, how many World Series has he won with us? And and he's going to go down as one of the better DHs of all time. Oh, he, I think he's um, he's surpassed Eddie Grover Martinez already. Yeah, so now yeah. The, the question will become whether or not he'll be the first DH in the Hall of Fame. That might be a little tough. And, you know, especially with, you know, there's always been this cloud and he kind of let on that mm -hmm. there was something going on. Oh, he, he admitted it, um, although he did admit that he was did it intentionally. Right. Yeah, and again, even back then, everybody gave a pass. Yeah. Okay, I'm okay with it, though. I'm okay with I it. I don't know if everybody. I, I have some Yankee fan friends that call our first two World Series farces. <laughs> but then you have to call pretty much all of the Yankee World Series in the last uh, 15 years farces mm -hmm. as well. So it kind of goes both ways. Kind of so That was the there. era. Yeah. All right, so we'll close the book on that era and, you know, whether or not any of those guys make the Hall of Fame, um, who knows? Mm -hmm. um, I think eventually they probably will after, you know, people stop making their point. You yeah. watch you watch the games, though, when they were hitting 50, 60, 70 <laughs> home runs, right? Oh, you can you watch Mark, the game. Hey, look, Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa saved baseball, right? Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Nice story out of um, out of Fort Myers the other day when the Orioles came to town. Uh, Kyle Yastrzemski's grandson Mike got in the game for the Orioles. He was a forty. Is there such thing as a forty fourth round pick? Some some ridiculous yeah. number. Um, didn't he drive? Did he drive in a run? No, maybe. Um, I know. I know he grounded out. I watched he grounded it out and he, and he he pinch ran. Okay. Yeah, but it was a nice a nice to hear. Um, you know, Yaz was there, and I guess Yaz was. Um, working on the major league field, uh, which he normally does not. And um, you know, they were saying that if the Red Sox had drafted him, it would have been a little too much pressure on Mike Yastrzemski. Sure. Um, you know, coming up, you know, in the same organization as his dad. Mm -hmm. But do you really think that's true? There would be a lot of pressure on him? I get the feeling there are a lot of fans that have jumped on the bandwagon from 04, and I'm not saying anything bad about the fans, but they really, did they, my question, do they, these fans really have an idea of who Kali Shremsky was? If they never saw him play, well, they know he's a Hall of Famer, but they don't know about 1967, the 44 home runs, the how many home runs he hit that, that tied a game or went ahead was a ridiculous number, the clutch hits. I'm not sure they know about all that. Well, I, I get what you're saying. Um, I think everybody knows the name, even if you've only been Sure. Uh, a fan since 04. I think everybody knows the name. Everybody knows that there's something important about that because that name transcends not, you know, it's not a Red Sox game. It's a, it's a baseball, it's a sports name. So 
Um, so you're saying would that translate to more pressure? Yeah. I think internal pressure, his, uh, you know, Mike Yastrzemski's internal pressure probably would. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure the external pressure would be. Uh, it, it's the same thing as somebody falling, maybe not quite, like Mark Michael Jordan's footsteps. Right. You know, um, or, um, well, Carl Malone had a daughter that played, was it Carl Malone had a daughter that played basketball uh -oh. pretty successfully? Yeah. I don't know if she's in the WM. But it's got to be pretty much like that for any son that follows mm -hmm. a pretty successful father or daughter. I mean, father. the only thing I'm looking at is, I mean, I mean Carl Yastrzemski retired almost 30 years ago. Yeah. 30. That's unbelievable to me. 30 years ago. It's not like, you know, it's not like, you know, Yastrzemski, you know, retired, you know, 20. Well, that, that would, well, it's possible if you retired 20 or 15 years ago, you know, and the kid was 10 when he yeah. retired, you know, 30 years ago. I mean, to put into perspective, he you know, retired way before his grandson was born. Yeah, you know? Carl Yastrzemski uh, is on the, the very, very beginning of when I started watching some baseball and following some of it. So even I don't recall as much as he did. Mm -hmm. Probably the tail end of his career wasn't as strong. Um, my probably first recollections are, you know, Jim Rice. Yep. Um, some of those guys there in that time frame, early 80s mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's interesting that the, the pers interesting the perspective you know you have you know depending on if you like I saw Shamsky play a lot of games. I was young, but I saw him play a lot of games. Yeah. You know, and I, I reached, you know I I definitely identified with him. I you know I I I threw righty. I batted lefty. I played first base when I was a kid. You know, and who do you want to be? Number eight. Why do you want to be number eight? He's you know. He, he's he is Boston. Right. He was Boston, you know. So you know that that was how I felt about it. I know. I, I don't think I ever. Uh, my parents weren't really into that uh, taking you to games. I I think I don't even know if I ever went to a Red Sox game as a kid. You know, I remember listening on the radio all the time. Um, I think the Hartford Whalers were probably <laughs> my first yeah. major league uh, game. Yeah. No. I, I when I was a kid, I went a couple of times a year. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah, it was neat. It was neat. A um, couple stories that um, that I, I, I grabbed from that panel discussion. They were talking about Julio Iglesias. Oh yeah. And uh, you know how it was difficult when you know he was hitting so well, and then they sent him down with Drew when Drew came back, and he didn't want to. He you know he was disappointed and everything. And uh, they were also talking about Dustin Pedroia. And what a leader he is. And we know he gets his uniform dirty every day. He sets a tone, you know, for, for the work ethic and all that stuff. So they said the story was that um, Iglesias was working on cutoff throws. And uh, I guess there was a play in practice down the right field line. And Iglesias kind of got, got caught in the middle and didn't play, didn't make the play very well. Yeah. And Pedroia went out to talk to him and said, look, you're not in Cuba anymore. You're in Fort Myers, Florida. And in Fort Myers, Florida, I'm Fidel Castro. <laughs> so, you know, that, that gives you an idea of kind of some insight of, you know, what we don't know about how Dustin Pedroia really plays the game. Yeah. You know, I thought that was a funny story. And, and, and I think the idea with Pedroia is that, you know, his wrist is healthy and hopefully that'll mean that he'll have an uptick with the power numbers this year. I yeah, love that story, though. That, that's hilarious. And, and you know what? Uh, Pedroia... Pedroia has a little jeter in him, right? Uh, you don't really understand everything he does until you watch it. And it doesn't always translate in the numbers. But I think you're not going way off on a limb to say that the way he's progressed in his career and, and the winning attitude and just getting down and dirty and, and just coming through in the clutch, it's just you can see that this is the career. It's going to be a long career. Um, and hopefully it leads to, you know, more championships, first mm -hmm. of all, and, and hopefully one day in Cooperstown. Yeah, so. yeah. One more Pedroia story. This, this is great. So the, the Red Sox drafted him, and so they sent him to, I think, the Gulf Coast League, single A, right after he was drafted. It was, it was his first game. And uh, I guess he, um, he's on first base, 
and there's a, a base hit down the right field line. And uh, so he rounds second, goes to third. The throw goes to third. He's safe. And, and the, um, the guy who had the single had been on the team all year. And the idea is that the trail runner on a throw to third goes to second. Right. Well, he didn't. And I guess Pedroia exploded at third base and was just yelling and screaming and swearing his head off as to why this, this hitter didn't go to second base. And this guy had been with the team all year long. Yeah. Didn't really matter. <laughs> that's that's I mean, the kind that's, of guy. That's he kind of plays easy it back the right then. way, right? Yeah, run, yeah, exactly. Run out the ground out to first every single time. Yep. Um, yeah, no, I think he's going to uh, just... Uh, if you go back to one of our shows when Pedroia first came up, and I think he was hitting 140 or 181. In April, a, in a, April of that year. And we were talking yeah. about, do the Sox just bench him at this point? Mm-hmm. Do, we, do they send him down and kind of let... And we said, no, no, you got to stick through mm, it. Right, right. You got to stick through it. And that was when he was, he was a rookie, right? Yeah. He was just coming up. Yep. And lo and behold, um, you know, a few weeks later, he just, I mean, it might have not even been that long where he started turning it around. And by the end of the year, I think he was in the, I don't know if he, what he ended up with, maybe 280 something. Yeah. But, rookie of the year. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Not a bad deal, right? Not at all. But people were ready to send him down in April. Yeah. Yeah. You're batting 181. Let's send you down or 176. Something crazy like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, Cor- glad he stuck through it. I, I've, I've um, we mentioned this before. Corn and I were at a game the previous September, and saw him hit his first major league home run. Yeah, his little guy cool. hits, hits, hits his ball in left field. Yeah. Wow, it's amazing, little guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, what, what are your predictions for the Red Sox this year? We always do this. I didn't, <laughs> ask, I didn't ask Corn last time, but I will. Uh, how many wins? I, so I don't know. Not, I don't know. Right, I don't know. How, I don't know how you can answer the question. Well, we pretty much know who know the roster. We know the bullpen. We know the starting rotation. There's not a lot of unknowns here. Right. Um, okay. So did, they did, won how many games? Ninety-seven. Last year, right. Ninety-seven. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I think I guessed. I think last year I said they were going to win. I thought they were going to win eighty-two yeah, or something. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Like that. Yeah. And you were going to be happy with that. I was going to be happy with that, but as we kept waiting, we're like, wait, 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 let's just keep it going. Then we were figuring, wow, they might even win 100. Are we too early asking the question, or should we just... Maybe. Throw? I think we're a little early. My pre preseason, I would say, and I hate to say this, but I think it's the 90-92, the 90-92 win, which I think gets, you're on the cusp of the, of the playoffs. I think Is they're going to win 160. Because, you know, they're not going to have the bullpen problems where they went through Bailey and Hanrahan and Tazawa and finally took them so long to get it to, to you know, get with Uehara as the closer. They're not going to have to worry. Is Lackey going to be okay? They've got all these pieces in place, and so they're just going to win 100, you know, 30, 140 games. <laughs> Doesn't it look that way? But you know that's not how that's it works. That's how you always feel like they can <laughs> win, right? Well, you know, they, they got all the problems ironed out last year, and yeah, they still won the World Series. So, you know, they're set now. They, yeah, they can, they can, all, they can know, just all reality, you know? reality is they caught lightning in a bottle. I think maybe all of those things they had to overcome. <laughs> no, they, they, they did it already. Them. They did it already. Yeah, they're so done. They, 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 they got it set now. No, the reality is that, that injuries happen and, and, you know, performances aren't what you expect and some other are more than you catch expect. Up. Oh, yeah, they got to play other teams too. It's not just, you know, them on the field every night. So that's a, yeah. I mean, obviously, as everybody knows, the Yankees have gone on a little shopping spree. Mm-hmm. It doesn't always. Oh, you, you mean, you mean Andrew? You mean Andrew Bailey? Yep. Yeah. That was a <laughs> big pickup. I know. So it doesn't always translate into wins, but I, you know, they're going to be better, mm-hmm. no doubt about right. it. Right. But their um, infield, as Corn points out, their infield is kind of iffy. Right. You know, at third base, right. at, and, at second and at base, second, they lost. Quite a bit they of did, there. and then don't forget, you know, they have um, they have their first baseman um, Teixeira. Teixeira working his way back still from wrist surgery, you know. So that's three infield positions that are kind of, you know, we'll see. Yeah. So that that that's gonna that's tough going into season with that when you've got the Orioles and you've got Baltimore's Baltimore, yeah. not bad. They do they got Nelson Cruz. Yeah. You know, and you have you have the, the Rays, and you have the Red Sox, and Toronto's and to, always kind of you know there. they were the I think there always has to be one team that falls off the map, and it was them, and they made some great acquisitions last yeah. year. You yeah. know, so they might be back. You don't know. You, know? you don't know. 
Yeah, so I, I you know, I again, it's amazing to say because Francona got fired and they won 89 games mm -hmm. that year. Yeah. They missed the playoff by one game. Exactly. Right? Um, so I, but to win over 90 games is quote, really good accomplishment. Right, I'm, right. I'm picking it in the 90 to 92 okay. range. I'll um, tighten it up for you. I'm going to say 83 again. Okay. I'm going to say 83 again, just for the heck of it. And that could happen too. It could. You never know. Absolutely. You never know. Absolutely. Well, it's great having you in the studio tonight. Thanks. And we'll see about uh, getting the three of us together at some point. There's plenty of room in this nice, spacious studio. Beautiful. Yeah, not bad, not bad. We welcome your comments on all social media platforms, on Twitter, at Red Sox Alley, on Facebook, the Red Sox Alley page. You can check out our new website, which is affiliated with us, called YourBostonSports.com, which is right now all multimedia content, primarily from us. Uh, we're looking to do some more interesting stuff on that site. Again, it's yourbostonsports.com. Or if you want to do the old-fashioned way, send us, an e send us an email at redsoxalley at comcast.net. Thanks again for joining me, Flanagan. Can they fax? Or there's that's an, way back. Uh, <coughs> there's, no, there's no fax. No, we can't oh, do okay. that. No. I, uh, there's no, they can't send us a letter. We don't have a, we don't have a P.O. box. Yeah, that was kind of you know, out of our budget. We really have to catch up. I know. Exactly. Well, thanks again for joining me. Hope thanks. you have a great night. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Take care.